Hello and welcome to the Christopher Hall Training Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about low back conditioning. So we're going to briefly touch on injuries and how to minimize their risk, but the main focus is going to be on conditioning the lower back, building resilience, building the robustness uh, for everyday performance, for sports performance. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So I've broken this uh, episode up into essentially four parts. The first part where we're going to talk about injury and how we need to think about overcoming the injury and what will help build us towards minimizing risk of injury in the future. So that's going to be part one. Part two is about posture of the spine. So we're going to be talking about movement we're going to be talking about neutral spine, we're going to be talking about moving the spine, um, how to move the spine, should we be very rigid, should we be or you know should we move the spine, so that'd be part number two. Part number three is about uh, capacity and building the capacity of the spine and how do we do that, where do we start, where are we with regards to capacity of our own spine, so that'll be part number three and then part number four I'm going to be talking about a, a concept that has been talked about by many different people, but essentially just building a low back account. So just building, continuing on building uh, on the on the capacity uh, story, but thinking about your lower back as um, as an account. So we're going to be talking about the low back um, condition, and then that will help us understand how to condition it. So part one is essentially lower back pain if you want to call it that I'm not going to go into any great depth I've got other episodes and other tutorials on that so you can just explore my channel um, for more specific ones but if we're talking about overcoming an injury and in some respects minimizing the risk of injury what we need to think about is building a margin of error now We'll sort of come full circle when it comes back to part four uh, when we talk about the low back account. We'll talk about that in a little bit more uh, depth. But essentially, when we're coming overcoming an injury, we need to think about the injury itself. So we need to understand what the triggers are. So what is triggering the pain? Is it the posture you're in? Is it the activity that you're doing? Is it just simply the endurance or fatigue levels within the within the lower back? So that it doesn't really matter about the activity. It's just more the duration that you're doing the activity for. So it's your your low back's ability to keep going. So the activity isn't necessarily important because that changes. Um, it's more just the endurance and the fatigue of the lower back that's triggering the pain. So there, there are others, there are many others. Um, another one, because we're going to be talking about it, um, is exercise. So are there particular exercises that trigger the pain? Um, what is it about those exercises? Is it the load? Is it the repetition? Is it a part of the movement? So what that leads us on to is once we can understand those triggers, it's then either removing them completely or just adapting and modifying movement to be able to move. So some triggers you will be required to adapt. So if it's lifting, you will just have to adapt how you lift because you are going to lift things in every day. You're going to lift a child up off the floor. You're going to lift some shopping bags up. You're going to pick a box up. So there are all these different um, opportunities in which you are going to lift. So that is one thing to modify. If it's an endurance or fatigue element, then you can eliminate um that by just breaking the task up. So if you're if you're sat down and your back fatigues after 10 minutes, you can eliminate that trigger by sitting down for say five or seven minutes, then getting up, having a walk around, 
maybe do a couple of exercises, a couple of stretches, whatever it needs to be, sit yourself back down, and then that is your way of um, eliminating that trigger of the time frame. So when it comes to building a margin of error and minimizing risk, it's about eliminating those triggers. Adapting movement, mod modifying movement. Because when we talk about triggering the pain, if you're constantly triggering the pain, you have a very small margin of error. And whenever you go into a posture or whenever you go into a position or whenever you do an exercise, you are on the cusp of triggering that pain. And I guess that will sort of lead me on to as I've talked about a low back pain before, it's not necessarily, you can't think of it like a broken bone. It's an injury that heals and then you're better. It's very much a condition of the back and a poor condition of the back is very close to pain. So whenever you do that one movement, it triggers. A better condition of the lower back is one that is further away from that cusp or from that critical point of triggering the pain because you have a margin of error. So by the simple fact of removing triggers, you are starting to build that margin of error. Now that then doesn't sort of complete the job. What we then need to do is start thinking about um, movement as a whole, exercise as a whole, and how we can build it and improve it um, to be able to um, continue building that margin of error, but also doing it in a way that promotes the health of the spine. Now, what does that mean? Well, most back injuries are a buildup of what is known as micro traumas or micro injuries. So when you do something wrong, you may get a micro injury or a micro trauma within the spine, but you don't realize that that's just happened because there is no pain whilst that's happening. So these micro traumas and micro injuries build up and then eventually it hits that critical point where that margin of error has run out and you get the pain. So we have to think about the mechanics of the spine, the, the, the mechanics that promote a poor condition and the mechanics that promote a healthier condition of the lower back. Now I've worded it in that way specifically because we are talking about the condition rather than a one moment injury. I was running along, someone clattered into me and I twisted my ankle and then I was injured. That's just one traumatic moment that injures the ankle or injures the knee. Most back injuries don't happen like that. They happen over time, over weeks, over months, potentially over years. So we have to think about it in that way. So what we're gonna do next in part two, we're gonna talk about posture of the spine. And we're going to think about, should we move it or should we not move it? So how do we go about answering that question of, should I move the spine or should I not move the spine? I get accused, because I mention the word neutral spine, I get accused of being an advocate of never moving your spine. Now, if you've listened or watched any of my content long enough, you'll realize that that's not the case. Because hopefully those people that are accusing me of that are gonna watch this next sort of 30 seconds. So with regards to the position of the spine, what are my thoughts? We need to maintain the posture of the spine, but we can't be too rigid. We also need to be able to move the spine but we shouldn't be too sloppy because both of those extremes are gonna cause a problem. So the movement advocates 
if you are just aimlessly suggesting that we should move the spine in any which way we should, load that, do it in a poorly structured way, then that's going to create as much of a problem as the people advocating that you should never move your spine and you should be very rigid in your movement. We need to be both and we need to use both at the right time in the right way for the right activity. So why do we why do we maintain posture of the spine or maintain posture of the lumbar spine? Well, what's pretty well established is that when we maintain the neutral posture of the spine, the forces and the loads on the spine are distributed much more evenly across the passive tissues of the spine and the passive tissues being the bony structures the ligamentous structures the discs so the load is much more spread out across those if the load is concentrated across those depending on the position that you're in then you are going to be increasing the effect of those micro traumas they are going to be building up that much faster if we then load the tissue in that, then it's only going to speed up the process. Now, when, when are we allowed to move the spine? Well, we are allowed to move the spine at any point. There are just certain caveats. Now, some of those caveats is when we are just moving our body weight, we are putting the least amount of load and force through the spine. Therefore, if we think about those micro traumas, they are going to build up most slowly. So when we are just moving in everyday life, when we are bending down to pick a pencil up off the floor, we are at least risk of injuring the spine. Now that will depend on how much margin of error you have. So let's just assume we have a large margin of error. We then bend our spine. We don't hinge at the hip. We just completely bend the spine and we pick up the pencil from the floor. We are at least risk of injury when we do that if we have a large margin of error. If we have a small margin of error and we pick that pencil up off the floor, we are at a greater risk. So we need to understand these caveats. If we have a large margin of error, because we've been building it, we've been building the capacity of the spine, and we then go and pick up a box from the floor that, I don't know, let's just say weighs 10 kilos or 15 kilos. Again, if we've got that large margin of error, it's probably not going to cause a problem. It may create a micro injury or a micro trauma for some reason, but if we've got that large margin of error, it's not really going to make a difference. But again, if we lift that same object with a small margin of error, it's going to have a bit more of a profound effect on our lower back. So should we move the spine? Absolutely, there's no problem with it. It just depends on the condition of the spine and the activity that you're doing. So if you're sloppy and you're moving the spine, then you're going to cause a problem. If you are lifting a heavy load, so let's just say you are lifting a dead you're, you're doing a deadlift you've got a bar on the floor and it weighs 50 kilos 75 kilos 100 kilos whatever is heavy for you then by maintaining a neutral posture of the lumbar spine you are going to be spreading all of that load and force around the tissues and it's going to be that much more effective and not damage the spine as much as it could now just for the sheer load of that if that is, for example, your one rep maximum, so that is the that is the weight that you can lift only one time, then there is a there is a um, a probability that with a perfectly maintained posture of the lumbar spine, just lifting that load is going to because of the forces going through it is going to have a a micro trauma. Um, effect so they they could start to build up 
So it doesn't mean that neutral spine prevents injury because you've got the load in that equation as well. So we have to take that into consideration. We have to understand that. And so when we're talking about should we be rigid, should we move, it depends on the scenario, it depends on the person. So we have to take that into consideration as well. So as I mentioned, there is no answer to it, but if we want to build the condition of the spine, first of all, we have to know what sort of margin of error we have, and then we have to know how to manage that margin of error. But what we're gonna do in the next part is talk about how we can build a capacity in the lower back, which is essentially building a margin of error. And this includes everyday movement, training and recovery or exercise and recovery. So what do we need to be able to do to build this margin of error? Well, we need to be appropriate. That's the first thing. Because again, because of the topics that I talk about and the way that I talk about them, it can be misinterpreted in that I'm telling people to avoid exercise or avoid certain exercises and things like that. What may be masked, again, to those people, to those critics, I'm just talking about being appropriate. That's all I'm talking about. If you have a poor condition of your lower back, don't jump in at the deep end and start doing one rep max training or heavy strength training. You need to be appropriate. That informs the exercises that I choose. The reason that I do so many plank, side plank, bird dog, bridge style exercises or uh, tutorials and talk about those exercises so much is because that's where I say is the entry level. Now I don't know that people watching this are at a more advanced level. If you have back pain, your back, you, you may have arms and legs that are at a more advanced stage. But if you have pain in the lower back, you have a beginner's lower back. You have advanced athlete arms and legs but you have a beginner's lower back. So we need to think about how can we take that beginner's lower back and build it into an advanced lower back. So it can match the arms and it can match um, the legs. That's why I say most people using a, um, a, a belt that goes around the core and goes around the lower back, that's why I say, in some respects, those are pointless because you are creating arms and legs that can lift heavy weight, but you aren't creating a core that can lift heavy weight. Your core needs to match your legs. The only reason you need a back belt is because your, your arms and legs are at a more advanced level than your lower back. So we need to be appropriate and build capacity, which includes movement, training or exercise and recovery. And what we also need to be able to do is we need to start at the level that we are, or that our lower back is at, which may not mean which is where our legs and our arms are at. So we need to think about it in that way. So we need to have that understanding because if we just continue training, then it's only going to um, create more of a problem. So we need to get past that and we need to start thinking about being appropriate, doing the appropriate training for our lower back. Now that not only means the capacity of it, that also means the exercises, which is informed by what we talked about in part one, which is the um, removing of the triggers. So if it is a heavy deadlift that triggers the back, we might need to think about reducing that, reducing the weight, maybe building the, the repetitions. If we're doing slightly lighter ones, but higher repetitions, we may need to think about reducing the repetitions, but maintaining the weight and things like that. So we need to think about it in that type of way. And in some respects, take, take our lower back for what it is and not what we want it to be or what we think it should be and what we think it should be able to lift. We need to take it, we need to be more objective than that. So being appropriate is essentially choosing the right exercises, choosing the right frequency of those exercises moving properly and by properly I mean building a margin of error as I've described 
Can you move your spine? Yes. Should you be rigid? Yes. It depends on the scenario. But also we need to allow it to recover. So there is nothing wrong with creating micro traumas within the lower back. Because if we recover properly and allow them to heal, that's how it became, becomes stronger. The reason the back it doesn't become stronger or doesn't build resilience and capacity is because we don't allow the micro traumas to heal themselves properly. And so we're always close to that margin of error and it's always going to cause us a problem. So we need to think about it in that way. So we need to recover those micro traumas. Now, what I'm going to talk about in part four, it's only going to be a short section, but I'm going to talk about this low back account, which is going to essentially sort of wrap this up and summarize it and hopefully help you make sense of what I mean by margin of error, um, low back condition, uh, so on and so forth. And the low back account is a very simple concept. As I've mentioned, let's just say we've got a, an imaginary line that goes across here. When we go under the line, we trigger pain. When we are over the, when we are over the top of the line, we are pain free. Now, through time, there will be times where we go above it and there will be times where we go below it. So there will be times when you'll be in pain and there'll be times you'll be pain free. Now, when I talk about margin of error, margin of error is that line and how much have you got in your low back account. So if you are up here, you have a large margin of error. If you are down here, you have a small margin of error. And like I mentioned before, when you have a small margin of error and you're gonna pick up that pen by rounding your spine, that could be the last uh, straw, if you will, that your back has and it drops under and creates pain. Now it only goes just under, so in a couple of hours you're back out of it, but you're just above it again. And then you could drop back down because you do something else and then you come back out of it and then you drop back down. So you're always in this little cycle where you've got a small margin of error. So what we are trying to do or what I am trying to do with my content is help people build their margin of error so when they go to pick that pen up off the floor or that light box, and they do it with a rounded spine, they just drop down here. And then they go about their normal exercise and their normal movement and their back account builds and builds and builds. So when they go and pick up that 10 kilo box with a rounded spine, it just drops down here. That's the idea of the low back account. Now, for want of a better way of describing it, this isn't a perfect example. Whenever you use a poor movement, so whenever you round a spine, whenever you lift a heavy object with a rounded spine, you are dropping your margin of error. Whenever you move well, whenever you move appropriately, whenever you allow yourself to recover, you are building that margin of error. So that is how we go about building and conditioning a lower back. This is all of the, uh, the underpinning knowledge of that. And that's how we need to think about it. So we need to bring this underpinning knowledge, we then need to bring it into the real world, i.e. going into a gym, moving around the house, moving around everyday life, and putting it into practice and building this margin of error. But that concept of that low back account is how you need to think about your lower back. It's not how you twist an ankle. It's not how you sort of um, snap an ACL, which is generally done in one traumatic movement or moment when someone clatters into you. It's done slowly over time. So when you're younger, you have a greater margin of error. As you get older, because you don't do things appropriately, because you use poor postures, that margin of error gets to here. You do one thing wrong, boom, and then you blame picking the pen up off the floor. Whereas it was never that. It was all that moment that allowed you to get to that point where you were one step away from back pain and then boom, down you go. If you're constantly in pain, you're just further down here. If you're constantly in and out of pain, you're floating around here. And what we need to be able to do is get you up here. So when you do the wrong thing, let's say the wrong thing, you only drop down to here and then you build it back up. You drop down to here, you build it back up. So you don't go in pain. That's how we need to start thinking about the lower back and that's how we need to start thinking about how we injure it, but also how we recover it, how we condition it, and how we build back further. 
Many thanks for watching this podcast episode. Um, if you've enjoyed the content, please do hit the like button. If you've learned something new, hit the thanks button. If you have a comment or a question, please do leave it down below. And if you uh, uh, want to watch more of episodes like this, please do hit the subscribe button and the bell icon.